So, four fifty ones, four drawings. Let's see how they're doing. I filled these up last week, or early this week. I guess early this week. I don't even know. It's all a blur. I had four cedar blue fifty ones. Filled them up with ink, then filled them up with different ink, and I'm just looking at the drawings I did with them over the course of the day, not the day, the few minutes actually. This was the gold fill without signet, that's this one. And let's see how it wants to write today. So we've got these big cranes outside our, our front door now and they're chewing up the land and building something new and I went outside and I drew them with these self-same aforementioned uh, 51s. And it's very odd, I'm just learning something. Well, we're marking on it maybe for the first time. When I draw with a 51, I often will flip it over and use the quote, fine side rather than the broad side upside down rather than the downside up. I mean, you know what I mean. I flip it over, so I'm writing on the top of the nib, not on the bottom of the nib. And um, there's something really, really neat about the very, very fine line that you get using those. And Somehow when I write with, when I start drawing with the broad side, I, maybe, it's just, maybe I, I think of the underside as being kind of like a pencil sketch before I do the, the inking. Is that what I'm thinking? What is my, what is my brain trying to tell me? So, anyway, here's, here's this one. Um, I like the fact that it um, has a difference between the front side and the back side. I thought that was it's a really nice contrast. Let's try a different one here. Put that away. Gold fill with signet. Luster alloy. Well, we'll do the luster alloy since that's here. Okay, these were two trucks outside the at the construction site. One was some crane kind of a thing. The other one was just a butch pickup truck. But as you can see by the drawing of them both together, that the butch pickup truck is hardly butch compared to the big butch beefy crane truck that you need a step ladder to get into. Um, this one, how is this different from the first one, Pierre Gustafson? Try to explain that to the folks at home. There was also this crane that had a big hooky thing on a weight with two little strappy things. I know that you probably think that I'm being rather non-specific about what I call things, but I'm not a construction person. I don't know what they're called. Strappy things. Maybe they're just called straps. You know, what is this thingy? I was at a, plum, a plumbing store trying to find a little pipe part that would go to my dishwasher 35 years ago. And I asked the pipe, the plumbing supply person, I need one of these thingies. And the friend that was with me laughed and said thingy like 
that was wasn't technical enough a term to talk to a plumber behind a clerk, plumbing supply store clerk. And I said, okay, what do you call it, smarty boots? And um, he's never forgotten that. And I was, I was wondering, do I call them smarty boots or smarty pants? And I went with smarty boots, which his Italian niece and nephew enjoyed. They got a kick out of that one. I was at their wedding and his wedding. And we translated it into intelligente scarpone. And they just giggled in glee. Strappy thingies. I'm just trying to remember how I got on this little tangent. So this one... You know, the other one wanted me to draw only on the downside, upside down side, the thin side. And this one, I'm sort of going easily between the two without really no noticing that I'm doing it. It's like shifting gears in a car. Wesky Squirrel can tell you how well I do that. <laughs> I hadn't driven a standard in a long, long time, and I was driving him around Minneapolis, and I kept on, I was on the highway in first gear. He said, you can shift now. He's very polite to his chauffeur. He was petrified of driving in Minneapolis, so let's have a chauffeur that doesn't know how to get into second gear, let alone fourth. But anyway, this, I can sort of go from one to the other really, really easily with this pen, where the other one, yes, it's the same amount of work that goes from, I don't know, maybe there's a scratchiness or something to one of them. I, I'm not really sure what the issue is. Okay, try a different one. Let's see. Sterling capped. Okay, this is, this is the one that, I later discovered, or in trying to make the pen work better, because it was very st stingy with the ink, I was switching um, shells and found one, the shell that worked really well, but it was broken and filed down, so there's more nib showing on this one. So this is not how it was when I was originally drawing this scene. But what was interesting about this particular drawing was there was a lot of residual greenish gray ink, which is still in it. Um, even though I've sort of filled it up with other colors, there's just a lot of whatever the ink was in it. So, you know, this is an experiment for you at home. You know, fill four pens, four very similar, pick your most similar pens you have, and fill them up with the same color ink, and try to discern the differences between them, among them. Because, uh... You know, if I, if I have a big fancy sterling silver overlay pen, and I have a Parker Duofold, and I have a Parker 51, and I have a, you know, and they all have different color inks, um, I'm so easily distracted by the color and the size and the shape and the whatever of the, the pen, and I get, I get away from what happens from here out and look from here back. So sometimes... You know, if you make from here back be all the same, um, you then notice the differences among the personalities of the pen better. Um, I went to a private high school when I was growing up, and we had to wear a uniform. It wasn't a military uniform. It was a civilian one. A tie, a shirt... 
charcoal gray pants, sort of a almost black dark charcoal gray blazer, blue shirt, light blue shirt, blue gray and black wide striped diagonal striped tie. Our jacket said a little crest. Honor God and Country. Breck it said Breck, I think. Or Breck, don't I don't really remember. Uh, and was it divided into three? There's a cross. Honor God and Country. I don't know how the country anyway, it had a lamp of learning, a cross, and something else. Maybe a I don't know what it was, come to think of it. Wore it for six years. Tell me, Pierre, what was I going to go... Anyway, everyone had to wear the same outfit. So, if they had gone to a public school, you know, Blanche would have had that fancy uh, mini skirt on and... Francine would go with the slacks suit and the whatever, and the kids would all be, you know, various kinds of jeans and sweaters and whatever they put on. But because we all wore the same thing, all our outsides were the same, I could really tell from a block off, well, that's so-and-so, because not so much of his hairdo, but it was sort of his posture or her posture. And the personality of the uniform wearer was much more obvious because of the fact that all the uniforms looked alike. So if you have a bunch of pens that are the same, do me a favor, fill them up all with black ink. So pick some color you like and draw with them or write with them for a while and um, you know if they're all fine nib pens write with all the fine nib ones try to keep try to make the four you choose or three do three uh, as s exactly similar as possible and then see how they're different. This one, this one wants me to write on the dark side of the moon, on the on the fatter side. I don't know why. Why does it do, it, do that? See, I, I haven't figured it out yet. Why does this want me to write like this? Yes, I can flip it over. It's just the dark side is maybe so wet. It just wants me to make this drawing very dark. Full of anger. What are your thoughts about this experiment? Do the experiment. Yeah, it's a stupid idea there you're saying. I can hear you right now, but try it out and see if it if it um, tells you something about your grouping of three or four identical pens. Ignore the cap differences. They all, these would be perfectly fine if they all were. What, am I doing the wrong thing here? Yes, I am. Bad, Pierre. Bad. This pen goes on this drawing. See what happens when I'm talking to you? I get distracted. It's a good thing I'm not on the talking to you on the phone in a car. It's not holding the phone that gets people into accidents. It's talking <laughs> to someone who isn't in the car. I'm doing it again. See? Stop. 